welcome back to Noah's Window. We're beginning a brand new week. And this week, if you're reading through the one-year Bible, we just kind of got snagged on some chapters that we just can't leave without talking about. So um, in Isaiah, which I'm so excited to be in the prophets, yeah. there's so much there. So in, in Isaiah, we have the story of a king, Hezekiah, mm -hmm. and um, he has, well, there's so much in there about Hezekiah. And we talked about Hezekiah when we were going through um, the earlier books in the Old Testament, and now we're, we're revisiting it in the uh, prophetical books. So in Isaiah, we have Hezekiah's story again. But uh, he had some really dramatic things happen to him. He did. And in chapter 35 of Isaiah, there, um, there was a situation where uh, the king of Assyria was coming up against Israel and making really bold threats and uh, saying a lot of things. I hope you'll grab your Bible and read the whole chapter and read the whole story. Yeah, one thing too, before we go past that king of Assyria thing, you know, a lot of times when we read the Bible, we hear about these other countries that are causing difficulty for Israel. It's important to recognize that Assyria was the first world power and the kingdom split after uh, Solomon died. The northern kingdom, which were 10 tribes of Israel, they've already been carried away by the Assyrians. And so all that's left is what's called Judah. It's just the southern kingdom, two tribes. That's where Jerusalem is. And so Hezekiah is late in the period of the kings. Right. And the northern kingdom's already gone. This world power, Assyria, has already crushed Israel, the northern kingdom. So this is not just like you know, the little normal situation where some nation comes up against Israel. It's not an empty threat. This is an existential threat. Right, and and they feel very emboldened by all the things that they have Well, Assyria has wiped out every other power they've gone against. Right, and all those other powers had God's little g. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is Snacharib is equating all those not even a God God with the true God, and that's a big mistake on his part. But when he makes these threats, and there's a look to the story. It's a fascinating story, so I hope you'll go and read all of it. But uh, Hezekiah prays, and the, the place I want to really focus in, and this is chapter 35 of Isaiah, in verse 21, uh, Isaiah son of Amos, so Isaiah was Hezekiah's preacher, right? right? So Isaiah son of Amos sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, because you prayed about King Sennacherib of Assyria, the Lord has spoken this word against him. So, the, I mean, there's so much here, but what I really want to focus on is that God responded to Hezekiah's prayer. And that's what he's saying. Um, as God, and, I, and again, I hope you'll read this whole chapter because then after that verse, it goes on, God goes on to say what he's going to do to the king of Assyria. And in that um, expression, that whole narrative of what God's going to do, the main thing I wanted to really focus on today is that God does hear and answer our prayers. And what's interesting is in, this was on September the 21st, if you're looking through the one year Bible, but if you go to the next page, the, the passage in, um, Psalms was Psalm 65, which is a Psalm of David. And I just couldn't help but notice that the recurring theme here because in Psalm 65, verse 5, David says to God, you faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. Um, so God does hear our prayers and he does respond. You know, Mary Alice, I think a lot of people have, a lot of Christians have the idea that prayer is just kind of an exercise mm -hmm. that, we, that we do, that we're supposed to do, like taking your vitamins. Right. And God's going to do what he's going to do, but then, oh, by the way, we're supposed to pray too. But the scripture that you read is just, is so important. Just, just those three words, because you prayed, because you prayed. There's so much there. I mean, we know what happened. I mean, the Bible's clear. Actually, this story is recorded in at least two books of the Bible of God defeating the Assyrians. God sent one angel and killed 185,000 Assyrians and sent the Assyrian king home. And I think I said this uh, uh, on a previous Noah's window. Sennacherib, because he was the head of the first world power, he, he wrote his own history. And he said, he, he talked about all the kings that he defeated. Then he came to Hezekiah. And he said, Hezekiah proved especially difficult. You know, he didn't say that they got, he didn't say they got destroyed there. He, he just said he proved especially difficult. We talked about that the other day. But getting it all goes back to because you prayed, because mm -hmm. you prayed. And what it indicates is if Hezekiah hadn't prayed, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have had those results. Mm -hmm. You know, the book of James says, you have not because you ask not. And, and the commonality between that Old Testament scripture in Isaiah that you shared in the book of James is the word because, mm -hmm. because. And I would quickly want to qualify that a little bit here because even in that, in that James passage, uh, sometimes you don't get what you pray for because it's, it's a selfish prayer. Yeah, and you that's know? the next line in James. Right. Sometimes you don't receive because you ask 
you, right. you ask for the wrong thing. So but, we're not talking about praying for a new Cadillac, or I guess people don't even want Cadillacs anymore. Whatever it is. is the, well, everybody the thing that, that works for Cadillac now. <laughs> <laughs> You but I, this is well, this is not talking about your own personal prosperity necessarily. We're we're talking about God's working in the world. And well, God's I, I think it goes back to the context. You know, Marianne, mm -hmm. that's one thing you're really big on. You, in like in the book by book thing, I know which is coming out now, uh, the Book of Galatians, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's one thing you're huge on, you know, it's the context. You can't just lift a verse out of scripture and then look at it by itself. You have to look at the context. And the context of this prayer that Hezekiah prayed was a prayer of desperation. Mm -hmm. It was, a, was Satan was coming against the people of God. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, it wasn't like, like you said, it wasn't like asking for some kind of cavalier request. This is an existential threat. This is a prayer of desperation. And, and God says, because you pray. And it's recognizing that these are enemies of God. Yes. And, and I think the world that we're living in today, we can feel attacked. But really, as God followers, the attack is not against us personally. It's against God. Yeah. And when we take that to Him, He hears our prayers. He hears our prayers anyway. But I think that's important for us to remember. I don't want to go too far down this road um, because I know it can open up Pandora's box a little bit. But I do have to think about my own life and my own situations. I wonder how many times I'm unhappy mm -hmm. with something in life and God would flip the script and say, because you, you didn't, didn't pray. pray. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to make anyone feel guilt or feel like there, there are various reasons why struggles come into our lives. But I do want to think, take that seriously. I don't, I don't want to have some problem in my life and then God say later, Mark, I could have resolved it, but mm -hmm. because you didn't pray. So here's my challenge to you today as we wrap up, and we'll have prayer here in a minute. But my challenge to you today is to take some time, get out a notebook or something, and look back in your life. How many times did God answer your prayer? You know, I think sometimes we are in a desperate situation and God responds and we you know, just move on. Mm -hmm. And don't take the time to look back and remember how many times God has heard our prayer. So that's my challenge to you. I've challenged myself to do that as well. To just remember all the times historically in my life. God has heard and answered prayers because He has. And I think that will help us to have even more confidence in the future because He does hear. And our prayers are powerful because of the God that we're praying to. That's and right. He does hear and answer yeah. our prayers. That's right. So, and on that note, as we close today, Mark, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Father, I thank you for your grace and your goodness in our lives. And we ask that um, you would remind us by your Holy Spirit and through our time in the Word the importance of prayer and how that you do hear and answer our prayers. And Lord, I pray even for those who are struggling with some kind of threat in their lives, uh, Noah's window today, I just pray that you would hear their prayers and see the concern of their hearts and answer. And we promise to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Window. We are looking forward to seeing you next time. That's right. And we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. God bless. See you soon.